Hi. What I want to talk to you about today is about stress and identifying stress in your own body and having that self-awareness that, you know, if you know me, you know that I like to talk about stress. I like to talk about emotional intelligence. I like to talk about being present and really thriving instead of just surviving. And when we're in that survival mode, that's when we're in stress. So many people are stressed out and they have no idea. I ask them, you know, you're, you're coming to me when you're showing me visible signs of stress, but then when I ask you about it, the answer is, well, no, I'm not stressed. This is just normal. This is just my normal life. Like, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to get rid of my schoolwork, my job, my kids, my spouse? Like, those things are all perceivably causing me stress, but that's life, right? Like, that's life. And life is stressful because any kind of change or uh, requirement to adapt is going to cause stress in the body. Whether that's good or bad, weddings can cause stress in a good way too. Travel, uh, vacations, all of that, any kind of change in environment is going to cause stress in the body. So it's not all a bad thing. It's just that stress curve has to be uh, at that point where it's benefiting your body and there's homeostasis and your body is able to relax as opposed to it going up, 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 high, 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 and your foot is always on the gas and you're constantly wearing out your body and not giving it that time to regenerate. So that's my passion is to share with people who get either the advice from a doctor or from a counselor or somebody in, in the healthcare profession that is like you need to reduce your stress level and us in the healthcare professions ourselves can be the worst culprits for just tolerating being in these stressful environments for for ever really and and the other part of that is that stress can be kind of addicting in and of itself right that that get up and go that cortisol adrenaline actually pushes you forward it's like a caffeine boost or um, it's actually giving you energy and so if that's your main source of energy all of the time because the rest of your body is kind of running on fumes then it can be hard to relax and that's where we get this kind of tired and wired feeling. So overall what I want to talk about today is how you identify yourself as stressed and why that's important. So along the way, we're going to go into how to overcome stress and how to become more resilient. But for now, the first step is to know where we are, to know where we are on the map so that we can orient ourselves of the direction that we want to go. So being stressed, identifying yourself, your sensations. I talk a lot about sensation because that's what's presently coming up in our bodies right now. So if you do kind of a head to toe scan of yourself, you can probably identify places where you hold stress in your body. A massage therapist would be able to help you out with this too, because they can help identify where you might be tense. Uh, But overall, you know as well where you tend to feel more tense. So just starting at the top of the head, we can get headaches when we're stressed. We, uh, they can be tension headaches, migraines. Migraines are very associated with, with stressful situations, right? Uh, we can have um, issues with our skin. Our skin is very much related to our digestive system. So if we're not getting enough blood flow to our digestive system because everything's constricted and tight, then our skin is, gonna, is going to be uh, one of the main indicators of something going on with our gut. We can have issues with, I know sometimes when I'm stressed, my my eyebrows will twitch. Uh, Or little little facial muscles will twitch. I can get neck pain. I can get shoulder pain. Again, it's that tension. I can have issues breathing. So my diaphragm, just going down my diaphragm. Shallow breathing is a sign of stress. Um, When we're when we're not stressed, when we're fully relaxed, we're like babies, right? We take deep, deep, full breaths through our bellies. 
we can have any kind of muscle tension all the way going down. Uh, gut issues, like I mentioned, uh, issues with our hips. We hold a lot of stress in our hips as well. Anybody that does yoga and does the hip openers and then has that emotional release knows that we do store a lot of emotion in our in our hips. And going all the way down to our feet, we have ankle problems, uh, jaw problems. These are kind of all of the the physical symptoms of stress. But if you pull it down to the sensational level, usually it has something to do with constriction. So that holding tight, right? Every Nothing can relax. Everything's tense. And when everything's tense, that takes a lot of energy to keep things tense, first of all. So that energy that could be used to relax and in your immune system and in your digestive system, all of that energy is being put into that tension. And that also constricts blood flow. And blood flow is required to distribute nutrients around the body. So we really want to pay attention to these sensations of stress physically. Emotionally, the biggest one is overwhelm, overreaction, quote unquote, overreactions. So I use the example of road rage as an example of kind of an overreaction. Uh, it's, it doesn't really make logical sense to be that angry when you're driving, but it happens to most of us where we feel like our boundaries are violated when we're driving. Uh, that can be a sign of, of overwhelm, of, you know, that, that classic crying over spilled milk, um, getting either crying or getting overly angry. Those are all signs that you've got some trauma going on in your body. You've got some stress going on in your body and that you may be of you may be holding that stress from childhood. It could be a, a very historical thing. So we want to deal with that type of stress too because that's affecting your present moment. So that emotional stress and then the intellectual stress is, is mainly for me, especially it's rumination. So when I get stuck in a loop of thinking about something over and over and I can't seem to get out of it and it causes that tension in my stomach, that knot in my stomach, uh, it, it prevents me from sleeping properly because I'm thinking about it all night. I'm trying to, my body is actually trying to help me and my mind is trying to help me problem solve it. But I'm ruminating. I'm chewing on it, chewing on it, chewing on it. That's an intellectual sign of stress. And then behavior wise, we can do all sorts of things in our relationships. Uh, the way that we treat other people, the way if we're taking things out on other people, on strangers, on people that we're you know, seeing on the street, people that are close to us, our bosses, our co-workers, all of that is is going to come out in our behavior when we're stressed. So the whole goal is to become more aware of these sensations of constriction, of tightness, of pain, of, uh, of overwhelm, and translating those sensations into emotions and then how the emotions have stories around them, and then we ruminate on those stories. All of that is building self-awareness about our level of stress. And then knowing where we are, then we can see, okay, I need to be able to relax more. I need to be in the present moment more. I need to work on gratitude and finding the good because it's so easy to focus on the bad. We have to train ourselves to focus on the good. So those are the types of things we'll talk about as we move forward. But for now, I just really want you to become aware of the sensations that come up in your body. If you want to learn more about sensations, I will post a chart on words that you can use so that your mind can make that connection to the body and what sensations are coming up. But I just want you to tune into yourself right now as we're sitting here and see, do that body scan and see where you might be holding stress in your body right now. All right, thank you for listening and I will talk to you soon.